Hello everybody, my dear friends, I am Dr. Armen, Professor Armen Astvat Satrian from Yerevan, Armenia, for you just Dr. Y, and so we continue to talk uh, about medicine. This is le These are lectures for students of medical universities and faculties. And today we'll talk about solitary pulmonary nodule. Okay, so what is solitary <coughs> pulmonary nodule? No, solitary pul pulmonary nodule is defined as a discrete lesion less than 3 cm in, in diameter that is completely surrounded by lung parenchyma. That is, doesn't touch the helium, mediastinum or pleura and it's without associated atelectasis or pleural if, uh, effusion. Solitary pulmonary nodule, nodules are most often detected incidentally when a computer tomography or a good chest X-ray is taken for other reasons. During lung cancer screening, for example. So actually, yeah, it's detected incidentally, just incidents. Uh, Non-pulmonary soft tissue densities caused by nipple shadows, warts, cutaneous nodules and bone abnormalities are often confused for a nodule on a chest on a chest on a chest chest X-ray. About etiology, uh, although cancer is usually the prim primary concern, solitary pulmonary nodules have many causes. Of these, the most common vary by age, risk factors, but typically include granulomas, pneumonia, and bronchogenic cysts. So bronchogenic cysts. Okay, why not? Let's uh, let's talk about some causes of uh, solitary pulmonary nodule. Okay, let's let's talk about it. About just some cause of solitary pulmonary nodules. Malignant causes. Malignant causes. Uh, primary lung cancer. Examples: adenocarcinoma, small cell carcinoma, metastatic cancer. Breast examples: breast cancer, melanoma, colon carcinoma, head and neck cancer, renal carcinoma, testicular carcinoma, sarcoma. Another cause, non-malignant causes, autoimmune disorders, granulomatosis with polyangitis, as an example, rheumatoid, rheumatoid nodules, benign tumors, for example, fibroma, hamartoma, lipoma, granulomatose infection, a typical my mycobacterial infection, blastomycosis, coxido, coxido, coxidio, the myc mycosis, coxidoetomycosis, cryptococcus, histoplasmosis, tuberculosis, that's granulomatosis infection. Just infection, for example, uh, ascariasis, aspergillosis, bacterial abscess, drophilariasis, dro uh, dog heartworm infection, uh, echinococcus cyst, 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 Pneumocystis, pneumocystis gyrovetsi, pulmonary vascular abnormalities, examples, cavernosis, angioma, hemangioma, pulmonary arteriovenous malformation, pulmonary teleangiectasis, no other causes, amyloidosis, a bronchogenic cyst, cyst, okay, hematoma, intrapulmonary lymph node, Loculated fluid, mucoid impaction, and rounded atelectasis. So, don't remember, don't forget about it, that the likelihood of malignant cause increases with age, of course. Now about evaluation of solitary pulmonary nodule. The primary goal of evaluation is to detect cancer and active infection. Yeah. Yeah, of course, we start with history. History may reveal information that suggests malignant and non-malignant causes of a solitary pulmonary nodule and includes 
current or past cigarette smoking, history of cancer of an autoimmune, autoimmune disorder, yeah, autoimmune disorder, occupational risk factors for cancer. For example, expo expo exposure to asbestos, asbestos, vinyl chloride, vinyl chloride, so vinyl chloride, uh, redden, uh, travel to or living in areas <coughs> with endemic mycosis or a high prevalence of tuberculosis, risk factors for opportunistic infection, for example, HIV, uh, immune uh, deficiency, yeah. Uh, older age, cigarette smoking and history of cancer all increase the probability. Smoking is very important, my friends. So, older age, cigarette smoking and history of cancer all increase the probability of cancer and are used along with the nodule diameter to estimate likelihood ratios for cancer. Uh, physical examination, a th a thorough, thorough physical examination may uncover findings that suggest an etiology, for example, a breast lump or a skin lesion suggestive of, a ca uh, of a cancer uh, for a pulmonary nodule, but cannot definitely establish the cause. Cannot. So, uh, thorough physical examination may uncover findings that suggest that an etiology, but for a pulmonary nodule, but cannot definitely establish the cause. The goal of initial testing is to, is to, is to estimate the malignant potential of the solitary pulmonary nodule. The first step is a review of plain X-rays and then usually computer tomography. Radiographic characteristics help define the malignant potential of a solitary pulmonary nodule. Growth rate is determined by comparison with previous chest X-ray or computer tomography if available. A lesion that has not enlarged in, in more than two years suggests a benign etiology. Tumors that have volume doubling times from 21 to 400 days are likely to be malignant. Very likely that, fortunately. Classification suggests benign disease, particularly if it's central. Tuberculoma, histoplasmoma, concentric healed histoplasmosis, or a popcorn configuration, hamartoma. Margins that are speculated or irregulated, speculated, speculated. or irregular, scalloped, are most indicated of cancer. Diameter um, less than 1.5 centimeters strongly suggests a benign etiology. Diameter more than 5.3 centimeters strongly suggests cancer. However, non-malignant exceptions include lung abscess, granulomatosis with polyangitis, and hydated cyst. And hide it is cyst. Location in the upper lobe carries a higher risk of malignancy. These characteristics are sometimes evident on the original plane film but not usually require computer tomography. Computer tomography can also distinguish pulmonary from plural radiopacities. <coughs> radiopacities. See the computer tomography has a sensitivity of 70% and the specificity, 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 sorry, specificity of 60% for detecting cancer. The main, mainstay of solitary pulmonary nodule diagnosis is interval imaging. Specific imaging recommendations depend on the size of the nodule and whether the nodule is a ground glass, semi-salt or solid, and individual risk factors, history of heavy smoking, exposure to asbestos, family history or lung cancer, older age. <coughs> PET imaging, positron emission tomography, PET imaging can help differentiate cancerous and benign nodules. PET is most often used to image nodules whose probability of being cancer cancerous is intermediate or high. 
It has a sensitivity more than 90% and specificity of about 78% for detecting cancer. PET activity is quantified by the standard, standardized uptake value uh, and the SUV, so called standard, uh, standardized uptake volumes, uh, SUV more than 2.5 suggest cancer, while nodules with SUV, <coughs> so standardized uptake values less than 2.5, are more likely to be benign. However, both false positive and false negative results occur. False negative results are more likely if nodules are less than 8 mm. False negatives PET scans can result, can result from metabolically inactive tumors and false positive results can occur in various infections and inflammatory conditions. Uh, cultures uh, may be useful when, historic, uh, when historical information suggests an infection cause, for example tuberculosis. Coxido, coxidiodomycosis, coxidiodomycosis uh, as a possible diagnosis. Invasive testing options include computer tomography or ultrasound guided transthoracic needle aspiration, flexible bronchoscopy, and surgical biopsy. Although cancers can be diagnosed by biopsy, definitive treatment is resection and so patients with a high likelihood of cancer with a res resectable lesion should proceed to a surgical resection. Okay, yeah, resection. So, however, bronchoscopic endobronchial ultrasound guided, guided mediastinal lymph node biopsy is being used increasingly and is recommended by some experts as a less invasive way to diagnose and stage lung cancers before nodules are surgically resected. Transthoracic needle aspiration is, bo is best for peripheral lesions and is particularly useful if infections et etiology, infectious etiologies are strongly considered because using, using the transthoracic approach as opposite to bronchoscopy avoids the possibility of contamination of the specimen with upper airway organisms. The main disadvantage of transthoracic needle aspiration is the risk of pneumothorax, which is about 10%. <coughs> Flexible bronchoscopy allows for endobronchial wa washing, brushing, uh, needle aspiration and transbronchial biopsy. Yield is higher uh, is higher for a, uh, is higher for larger, more centrally located lesions, but very experienced operator operator using specially distinct designed thin scopes can successfully biopsy peripheral lesions that are less than one centimeter in diameter. In cases in which nodules are not accessible from these less invasive approaches, open surgical biopsy is necessary. <clears throat> so treatment of solitary pulmonary needle, sometimes surgery, sometimes observation. If the suspicion of cancer is very low, the lesions are very small, less than one centimeter, or the patient refuses or is not a candidate for a surgical intervention, observation using serial computer tomography scanning is reasonable. The timing and duration of follow-up computer tomography scans are based mostly on the size, number and morphology of the, nod of the nodule. Uh, management Yeah, okay. Other factors that influence monitoring frequency include the location of the nodule, presence of, of, of emphysema or fibrosis on computer tomography scan age, sex, race, family history, and history of tobacco use. When cancer is the most likely cause or when normal England causes are unlikely, patients should undergo resection unless surgery is uh, uh, contradicated due to poor pulmonary function, comorbidities or, without, or withholding of consent. 
So that's enough, uh, of, that's largely enough <laughs> of solitary pulmonary nodule. Thanks for your attention. Uh, please don't forgive, uh, don't forget to make your donations because without your donations we can't exist. Uh, it will be highly appreciated your donations. How to, how to make these donations you can find in description of this video in YouTube or in uh, description of uh, this audio in podcast. Uh, if you are in YouTube, you can also use the possibilities of donations of YouTube to make a sponsor of our channel or make direct uh, direct donations. Up to you. It will be highly appreciated anyway. Thanks in advance. Goodbye and see you in another in uh, next lectures. Now ah, and don't forget to subscribe and put the ring on to be in touch with all news from our channel. Bye. See you and God bless you.